Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand power dissipation and specifically we are going to talk about dynamic power dissipation in this clip. In the previous clip we have already seen the instantaneous power which was given by IDD of T into VDD. This was the current drawn from the supply. From there on we went ahead saw the energy consumed over time and finally went ahead and found out average power which was nothing but energy by time which was given by 1 by T integration 0 to D IDT of T into VDD by DT. We have already seen this. Then we went ahead and saw static power dissipation which comprised of three major leakage currents. One was subthreshold conduction or subthreshold current. The other one was tunneling and the third one was reverse bias diodes causing the leakage in case of CMOS circuits. We went ahead and we saw that P static technically would be nothing but ID into VDD but we found out from our previous clips that there was no direct path from VDD to ground because at one point of time only one of my transistors was operating. So this average power under QSEN condition was approximately equal to zero and the only power which was left now was because of the leakage current or the static current into VDD. Why we could say this? was also because we presumed that our leakage current was constant and hence my instantaneous power and average power both would be equal to the same value. P static was VDD into I and we saw that P under QSIN condition the power is equal to zero because at one point of time only one transistor operates. However, there are secondary effects when the transistors are off and that secondary effects are nothing but subthreshold conduction, tunneling oxide, reverse bias, diode current and this small amount of static current will still flow when the transistors are off. And if we assume that this leakage current is constant, we can always say that our instantaneous and the average power both are same and hence the power dissipation is a product of total leakage current and the supply voltage which I have written. And then we went ahead and found I static was equal to I subthreshold plus I tunnel plus I through reverse bias junction. So this is what we have discussed in the previous clip. In this clip we are going to study dynamic power dissipation. Let's quickly go ahead and do that. So this is my CMOS inverter again. This is my load capacitance which was not shown in static because we assumed that the output was steady or QSIM and this was my input. Let's say my input was initially zero. If my input was zero, I can say that my load capacitance got charged to VDD. After that, my input goes to one. That means my load capacitance, initially it got charged to VDD, after which it got discharged. CL went to zero, correct? So what can we say from this? One charge plus one discharge will ensure that my charge moves from VDD to ground. So one complete cycle of charging and discharging will ensure that my charge moves from VDT to ground. Let's say that this load capacitance CL is switched between VDD and ground. Switch means it's going charging and discharging it's switching and completing cycles like this at an average frequency of FSW. Let's say that. We can also say the same thing in a different way. The number of times the charge, what was the charge? We know that load capacitance to VDD was a charge, correct? The number of times the charge which was equal to CL VDD is moved from VDD to ground in let's assume one second was equal to FS times. So the total charge, what can we say? The total charge moved from VDD to ground via charging and discharging of CL in one second would be nothing but one this is one second one into the times CL is switched that is FSW and the total charge which it transfers which is nothing but CL into VDD. So this was for one second. If I assume for time T this will change to T into FSW into CL into VDD. So here we could easily see that the total charge moved from VDD to ground via charging and discharging of CL in one second was nothing but 1 into FSW into CL into VDD. Similarly we can say that if it's time T it's going to be nothing but T into the whole term. So with that we are ready to find out the dynamic power dissipation which is given by we have already seen the formula 1 by T 
integration 0 to time t idd supply current into vdd into dt which is equal to vdd by t 0 to t idd at time t into dt now we know that the total charge which has been transferred in one second from VDD to ground was nothing but FSW which was nothing but switching frequency into load capacitance into VDD. So let's put that here. The total charge transferred VDD into CL and this is over a time period T. So this is what it is. So this is nothing but TT cancel which gives me VDD square switching frequency into CL. Now we very well know that most of the gates do not switch every clock cycle. So it is very very convenient. That means that the gates don't change their input in every clock cycle. Most of the gates don't do that. So it is more convenient to find power dynamic or dynamic power dissipation in terms of the clock frequency. So we'll replace this FSW by alpha times F where alpha is an activity factor which gives us the value of switching and this is the clock frequency. Let's understand what is alpha in a quick example. Suppose this is my clock and this is my one cycle. In one cycle my clock goes once high and once low. So my alpha is going to be equal to 1 because it rises and falls in that cycle. So the number of times it rises and falls in one cycle that will give you the activity factor. So let's put that here VDD square alpha into F into CL and this is nothing but my dynamic power dissipation. In further clips we will see how to reduce dynamic power dissipation. Stay tuned and thank you very much.